Fakatonga is not a swear word. And while we're at it, neither is Faka Mole Mole, Faka Pico Pico, or my personal favorite, Faka Laka Laka. These are Tongan words, which I know because my wife and I were volunteers together about 10 years ago, and we spent a lot of time on language training. We also spent every day of that training getting ready for the big day, the culmination of our training, which was Aho Fakatonga. It was a pretty big deal, a big enough deal that I was willing to get oiled up and dance for money. But I'll get back to that. First, allow me to Fakamatala, or describe, where Tonga is. It's a small place in the South Pacific, just east of Fiji, south of Samoa. Um, about 100,000 people. If you smushed all of the islands together, you'd get a landmass about the size of Memphis, Tennessee. So small. And the only reason I'd even heard of it before was because the king was once the world's heaviest leader, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, over 400 pounds. So small place, big leader, that's what I knew. And when we got there, we had to spend time on all sorts of different parts of training. We were learning about safety and security. We were learning about our technical skills we need to do our job. And of course, we were learning the language, Tongan, which was kind of the focal point. It took a lot of time. We were speaking it at breakfast, lunch, and dinner with our homestay families. We had a language notebook. We were taking classes during the morning and the afternoon, right? And if you were to look it up in there, which I did before I told this story, you would see that faka is a prefix that means to be like. So faka tonga means to be like a Tongan. So if I were to climb a coconut tree with bare feet, that's faka tonga. Eat soup with my hands, faka tonga. Open up that coconut with a machete, very faka tonga. And aho faka tonga was literally day of being like a Tongan. It was the big day at the end of our training where we came back from all the villages we'd gone to and the families we were staying with, and we showed off what we learned. We would weave baskets, we would make meals, we would dance. So every night after the language training, what did my wife and I need to do? We came back to our house and we worked on our dance routine. And our instructor, Marietta, was a lovely woman. She knew just how to taulunga, which is the, the female form of dancing. It's kind of the focal point of the whole thing. And you have to gently bend your knees and gesture just so with a smile on your face and the perfect angle. And she could do it in her sleep. There could be kids hanging off of her. She was not going to miss a beat. So my wife had a high standard to live up to, not to mention the fact that the town officer, which is kind of like a mayor, had written the song specifically for her that she was going to perform for. So she's working on this every night, and in the back, me and the other guy are kind of doing this very intimidating kind of dance. It's called the Tula Fale to protect her in the background. It wasn't too difficult, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have to have my dance moves down perfectly or even script them out too much, but she had to nail it. So picture this small little house with children gathered around and they are just loving it as we practice over and over and over again and make mistakes over and over and over again, trying to get ready for the Aho Fakatonga. These were long days of language training and even longer rehearsals. So when we finally get to the day before, it's dress rehearsal time. And there are a few different things about the dress rehearsal than what we've been doing before that. First of all, we're now in the town hall. It's a big open space and that means everybody's there. Everyone from the village came to see us get ready one last time for our big performance the next day. And that means not just little kids. And if you looked in the back, you'd see this little white sheet was set up because it was a dress rehearsal. So my wife had to come in and get dressed back behind that little white sheet. And Marietta was waiting patiently, smile on her face again, ready to get her going. And they did a couple things with my wife that night. First of all, they had a outfit ready for her, but her dress wasn't ready. So they had to do tapa cloth, which is kind of like tree bark. Imagine getting stripped naked and wrapped in tree bark. That was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was they took her glasses off, which means she could not see a thing. And then the last thing that happened was the most surprising. Marietta, the big smile on her face, took a bottle of baby oil and did this. all over my wife so that she was glistening. You see, the thing is, glistening is A, pretty, and B, makes it easier for people to stick money to you, which I know in an American context seems dirty, but this is the cleanest kind of sticking money to an oiled up dancer that you can possibly imagine. It's just good for fundraising. So they have wrapped her in tree bark, they've taken off her glasses, they have spat baby oil upon her, and they push her out from behind the sheet, and then a guy starts playing a banjo, except we never practiced with a banjo. We didn't even recognize the song, so that was fine for me. I'm just doing the motions, but my wife was lost. I mean, they say in theater here in the States that a bad dress rehearsal is a good omen. 
there has never been a better omen than this dress rehearsal. It was a wreck. And we sat around afterwards going, we're not ready for this. This is going to be the worst. They're going to be embarrassed of their Peace Corps volunteers. What do we do? We didn't sleep much that night. But the next day, a funny thing happened. Well, I mean, first of all, the dress was ready. No tree bark. Second of all, my wife wore contacts. And third of all, they actually rubbed baby oil on with their hands, which was something we were more comfortable with. But lastly, we noticed something. When we got done with a performance that we thought was really good, I don't think our villagers really noticed the difference between the dress rehearsal and the actual performance because they never expected us to be good at tongue and dance. They're good at tongue and dance. They expected us to try. They expected us to be there every day. They expected us to be their volunteers, the people who were willing to make absolute fools of ourselves just to be Fakatanga. And in that sense, we had succeeded the whole time. The whole thing was really about that. It was about their pride in us. So for one day, we realized we were Fakatanga. And that was pretty Faka awesome.